Hello everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the hot and humid country of the Philippines. I hope you're all COVID safe. Um, today I am on my way up to the mountains to Antipolo to check out my friend's lovely, almost relatively stock Sylvia S15 that he daily drives. And he's invited me to film it. everyone it is a hot day um, but it's worth it it's a beautiful place here up in Antipolo a beautiful place for an equally beautiful car I was following this car on the way here and man I cannot stop staring at it So is this more like a project car or a daily? It's more of a daily, right? More of a daily. More of a daily. Yeah. Wow. Sure. So what's the story here? What? Why did he choose an S15 over anything else? So uh, I really like the, uh, the lines of the Silvia. They're more curvy uh, rather than the R chassis. Because like, yeah. the skylines are more boxy. That's true. And the S chassis, of course, is a lot cheaper. Uh, for a high school kid, uh, <laughs> the previous high school kid, me, I wanted the the quick and the nimble, the sporty looking car, which is very unreliable at the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's basically everything that a kid would want. Fast, <laughs> uh, kind of cheap, but not really cheap. So yeah, that's why I took that's it. That's true. Yeah. The rear looks so good. Um, these taillights are not stock, right? They're not. They're made by 78 Works by uh, from Japan. They're from Japan. They're 78 Works. Is that a shout out? Yeah, 78 Works Japan, please sponsor me. Yep, 70, 78 Works Japan, if you're watching this. Uh, these taillights were released in the uh, Tokyo International Auto Show uh, 2019. They they just released them and I'm one of the few people who got them first. Oh, wow, uh, nice. I them from uh, righthanddrivejapan.com. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, the guys hooked me up. Um, this rear windshield wiper, is that stock? Uh, they come with all uh, spec S G T and spec R uh -huh. uh, Sylvia's, but uh, the lower spec Sylvia's don't have them. So this is imported from Japan? Yeah, it's straight from Japan. So it was right hand drive, wasn't it? It was right hand drive and then uh, what the, the guys did is they uh, split the dashboard into three pieces. They flipped it over. Oh, what can we can I see that? Rebuilt them. Can I see that? Sure, you can open it. This was split into... Oh wow, those are bucket seats. Okay, I can't sit. Uh, from the side because they're buckets. Yeah. Um, whoa. So this was split? Yeah, split How? into three pieces. And then flipped over and then completely remade. It doesn't look doesn't look that bad. Yeah, it look I I'm really impressed. Okay, so a dead giveaway. Is this a dead giveaway that yeah. it was a right hand drive? Yeah. But the the most dead giveaway when you're driving yeah. is this one. Oh, that light. makes sense. Yeah, it's on the other side. Yeah, you drive it like when other people drive it, they're gonna turn on the wipers. If they're, if oh, they're <laughs> and they're gonna turn on the lights. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's something that needs to be addressed. If you've seen this car before, if this seems familiar to you, yes, Ramon Batista has reviewed it. Yeah. Yep, I'm not the first one. Ramon Batista has featured in his video, and now it's my turn. Fun fact in the Ramon Bautista video, this car was a lot broken when a lot more broken, yeah, yeah a lot more broken that time. Like it had trouble starting, it was misfiring, oh, it really? was slipping. Yeah, that's why, oh, no. never, that's why he never really took it for a hard beating. Ah, okay, I get it. But like after that, after that video, a lot, uh, a lot more people contacted me, like wanting to fix the issues that they saw with the car. And now the oh car, wow, the car runs completely great. That's Shout crazy. Shout out to RCS Auto Center. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the the shop that builds Ramon's cars. Oh they wow. Also this car. RCS, RCS. Yeah, RCS Auto Shop. Thank you, thank you, Dal. Yeah. It's beautiful. You did a wonderful job. 
Okay, so in the Roman Bautista video, I remember the seatbelt's not working. Is that fixed? Yes. Okay, they're fixed. They're fixed and they work. And they will work. Um, is it true that this wheel is from an R34? From a GTR? Um, the, the R34 GTR and the S15 uh, have the same wheel, but they have different um, they have different badges. Badges are different. Usually there's a GTR around yeah, here. That one says S. Yes. Um, the Sylvia, the Sylvia badge right here, is that stock? Um, the Sylvia badge there is supposed to be smaller, the original one, but oh, okay. um, when they sh when they swapped it out, the the right hand drive to left hand drive, it, it went missing. The Sylvia badge is actually from the trunk. From the trunk. Um, if you look at the seats, they're actually on buckets. Um, are these bolted to the ground or on rails? Um, they're actually on rails, but they don't. The rails don't work, so technically oh, they're just they're just um, bolted to the ground. Yeah, the rails are welded. Oh, they like, keep on vibrating. I get it. Actually, when I was sitting in there, I thought that they were um, bolted to the ground because I was sitting so low. Yeah, yeah. That's what it's like in bucket seats. And there are rear seats, sort of. If you can, there are rear seats. But you can't sit in them anymore, They're right? Useless. Like, yeah. There's no space. So, um, is it practical? Like, did you ever want more from this? Like, did you ever need more space? Uh, not really, because I don't really care that much stuff. And the trunk is actually pretty. The trunk. Can we see that? Spacious. Oh wait, another JDM thing. Okay. The trunk releases on the pass. Oh what? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Oh, it's right here, and you pull it. Yeah, yeah, you can pull it. It's on the passenger side, of course. And then I just carry the random. A skateboard. Oh wow, that's in the rear, the battery. Yeah. Also, because of the intercooler piping and stuff, you can't really fit a large battery in front. So also weight distribution. Weight distribution. Yeah. Is this 50/50 weight distribution? Um, I think it's close to 50. /50. Close to 50/50. But yeah, I think that's why um, they're used for drifting so much, right? Because of how most of the power is on the rear and also the weight is almost perfect. Plus they're cheap, S chassis are cheap. They're cheap, parts are really cheap. And parts are cheap. The good thing is that um, S chassis parts share parts with a lot, uh, a lot more Nissans. How much power is it pulling? Oh, uh, how much? Stock or? <laughs> stock, how much was it? Stock, it was going at around 260 to the crank. To the crank, okay. Yeah. So to the like, wheel, how much is that? Like, so like two four, two fifty, two ten, uh, two thirty, I think. Oh, it loses that much. Yeah, because uh, it has a heavy drive chain. Ah, gets so gets. Like, so wait, so right now, is it tuned? A kinda. It has all the mods, <laughs> but not really tuned. Cause I don't have a uh, tunable ECU. Ah, okay, get it, stock, I get it, I get it. I can I can alter fuel pressures, turbo pressures, and everything. So right now with all the mods, I'm pulling around maybe around 280 to the wheels and to the uh, to the flywheel I think it's around 310. So with all this power and a legendary engine, I have to ask, do you drift this? Before. Oh, before? Before, because like originally it was supposed to be a race car build. Yeah. It already had the race car necessities like the clutch, the diff for the racing. Um, the wheels, it has the, it has a roll cage and everything. It has no interior before. Oh wow. And then... Oh, that, that's before you bought it. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be green, right? Yeah, it used to be green. It used to be almost race car, but not really. It, it uh, only has seen the track a couple of times. So that's crazy. Um, you bought a car that's almost going to be a race car. Yeah. To the point where a lot of parts of it were actually going to be race car already, even the interior. Yeah, they're missing. A lot of and then you missing. brought it back to stock, almost stock, relatively yeah, stock, to daily that. drive. That's crazy. That's why this is not your average daily. Yeah. Because it wasn't really meant to be a daily yeah, car, right? Meant, and yeah. not a lot of people are dailying this. A lot of people are drifting them. But um, yeah, it's so nice to see the stock. I mean, not a lot of people would do that. Not a lot of people yeah. would take a modified car and make it sort stock. of stock already. Yeah. True. Oh wow! <laughs> so, this has slow revs. <laughs> you can hear the turbo stuff. Yeah! This one's the blow up button. I shouldn't be having too much fun. And does the aircon work? It works. See, but it's, it's kind of old, isn't it? So I'll have it. I'll have it replaced. To go next one. Okay. Okay. So sitting in this thing, um, the bucket seats hold you in. Yes. The bucket seats hold insanely in. Um, 
I don't know if I can move around here, but if you're in the track or you're drifting, yeah. it will be really safe. Um, we're sitting so low. I mean, I came from an SUV, so this is low for me. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. Rev the car. So, uh, if you rev the car past 3,000 RPM, yeah, it's gonna shut off the aircon. Eh? What are these gauges? Turbo, uh, turbo boost pressure, oil pressure, and oil temperature. traffic it's not too hard to drive yeah. but when you want to go fast cool. it's no problem for the car it's it yeah, goes yeah. so fast goes. can I just say the seats in the back really are useless because yeah. it's it's stuck like his seat is touching yeah, touch the it. rear seats yeah yeah and the bumps the bumps are not too bad, not too bad. I mean for for a sports car yeah, it, yeah. it it takes it really well it's on thin street flex Street flex, but it's on the stiffest setting. Stiffest setting. Oh, but man, okay, I can't imagine being in a long drive in this. What's the longest yeah. you've driven in this car? Around three hours. Three hours in these yeah, bucket three seats. Three to four hours, yeah. Wow. Which fine, no um, reliability. Well, what are the things that you've had to fix yourself on this thing? A lot, but like in, in total, because it's a lot of it. But one of the issues lang that rise from S chassis ownership is there's a lot of leaks coming from random places. Yeah. yeah. And um, with the wing, what's it like to look? Oh wow, that's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It, the wing doesn't take away most of your vision, but it's still in the middle. Okay, so um, I was following him the whole time. He told me that we we're gonna go for some food, but I did not know that he was gonna bring me here. Check out the cool cars. There is a sedan AE86. Look at that. There's an R32 GTR and an FDRX7 and an AE86 that's set up exactly like an initial D, just like the Kumis AE86. Look at that. That's crazy. I've never seen one of these. This FD is, is drift spec, right? It's race spec. Race spec. Um, that's a fuel tank. Yeah, fuel cell. Fuel cell. And then a hydro e-brake inside. I don't know if you can see it. And look, interior is completely stripped out. Wow. Look at that wing. Carbon fiber. So I think this is a good place to end the video with all those JDM cars. Um, Carlos, thank you so much for letting me film your car. Today was so much fun. Thank you so much, dude. Um, if you liked it, like, press that like button, subscribe, uh, press that notification bell, and thank you so much for watching.